Uh, Christopher Olson and Tiffany Johnson. Um, Mr. Olson, are you in the Zoom booth there? Um, you'll need to unmute it somehow. Is Tiffany Johnson? Oh, there you I'm are. I'm here. Okay, great. Thank you. There you go. Mr. Olson, you with us? Yes, I am. Great. Can you hear, Can you hear me? Yes. So uh, this is a motion for adequate cause. And uh, let me just pull up the file here, if I may. And that's brought by um, Ms. Johnson, or uh, your current name is Steinweg? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Ms. Steinweg, why don't you go first and explain why um, you feel I should sign an order for adequate cause, and then um, Mr. Johnson, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Olson can respond. Um, there's just been a significant change in Chris's behavior in the last year, at least. Um, Chris used to be very involved in Zach's life in general. He would go to sporting events, he would go to doctor's appointments, things like that. And in the last year, he has been up to 40 minutes late picking him up. He's not involved in any of sports, um, doctor's appointments, anything like that. I've, Zach has come home stating a lot of things about drugs and um, his dad overdosing. And recently he asked me why his dad would have him pee in a cup for him. Um, Chris has lost his job, and I I know that there's some medical issues going on, but that doesn't usually cause you to be late to pick up your child or, um, I guess, stop being so present in their life. So just a lot of concerns, and um, with summer coming up, I'm concerned that he has him a week on, week off, and there's been frequent times that he hasn't given him his medication while he's there. So I think that basically sums up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Olson, any response? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Please. Um, uh, Zach? had been in my custody for five years and uh, wasn't doing very good at barn school. In fact, he was, he was like leading the league in office referrals and uh, wasn't getting like the proper attention he needed that he would be getting in Jewel. Um, okay, so he moved to Jewel, Oregon and goes to Jewel Middle School. This is quite the drive. In fact, the road that I have to take to get there is uh, the most brutal, bumpy, windy road I've ever been on. Um, I was late 40 minutes one time. Um, it, this is winter time, going through a road that tr are falling down in the road. People bring their chainsaws and chainsaw the road, the, the trees out of the road. Um, there's snow, ice. Um, it was a pretty crazy winter and I believe me, I have tried leaving earlier and earlier to get there in time. Um, and the past two weeks I've done that, I'm still late, two minutes late, six minutes late. I'm sorry to be that late. Um, the, the work that's been going on on the bridge, um, I tried leaving earlier and uh, I was six minutes late last time to pick him up. Um, so, and also Zach's sports. Um, I have always been totally, um, every practice, every, I've always been like the coach's hand. I'm usually out there with the boys um, helping out. Um, I haven't been able to do that. Uh, 
their the way they do sports is really different over there it being such a small school um when his games have went on i have been able to get to the ones that i could um now i did have some um issues with my health where i had to use basically all of my vacation time and wasn't able to like just leave work you know um so i had difficulty getting to some of them i it seriously breaks my heart to not go watch my boy do sports um yeah and enough with that um this declaration that i've read over is just basically like the two before this one there are a lot of accusations false accusations in there um uh, I, I don't know. I, I know I have lost weight. I did lose my job. Um, I'm working on getting another career going. My body just kind of gave out with doing the welding and the fitting all the years and, and all the overtime they used to push. And, and uh, I just couldn't perform the way I used to perform. Having to change my career and get into something different where I'm not using my, my body like I was. Um, Zach, see, to my awareness, we're not supposed to talk to, about our cases with our children. Um, our last case, he knew everything that was going on. Um, I don't know who was talking to him because he does have a sister, um, but he was totally aware of things that they're not supposed to be aware of. Um, he has, he should not even know some of the stuff that is going on right now, it blows me away of how he even knows this. Um, now I know he's been influenced by my girlfriend's son whose dad is um, very, very vindictive. And um, I've seen, I mean, just flat out lies, just uh, ridiculous ridiculous and uh, brainwashing the kid and it's this kid says things that he that a kid that age should not should not say um i don't know uh i feel that zach is in complete safe in a safe place he always has been um he always will be uh yeah you know i'm willing to give the ua um, uh, I don't feel like I need to go through and defend myself on all these, uh, you know what, if you want to call my mother, she has, um, a statement in from my mother that says some stuff. My mother said, I did not say all of that, but I was concerned about your health too. And I understand that. And, uh, I don't like to have, uh, like people worry about me. My mom didn't know when I got COVID and they, um, they, they took me to Portland, they took me to St. John's, St. John sent me to Portland. I didn't even let my mom know that I was going through that that night, just my girlfriend in case anything got really, really serious. And it was really serious, but I just don't need her to worry, you know, is how I feel. Um, I don't think anybody knew that I'm, I don't think it's any of Zach's mom and stepdad's business that I'm diabetic, that I take heart medication. Um, I, I quit drinking and I lost weight. I thought I was supposed to gain weight. Um, okay. I, don't, I don't know, Your Honor. I, I'm not here to waste anybody's time. Let's just get down to it. I mean, I'll take a UA. Um, let, let's like get over this. I, Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Steinweg, any response? No, Your Honor. Okay. So um, neither of you would be aware of this, but um, the court has recently adopted a local rule where before we take any other action on a um, parenting plan issue like this, um, we'd like the parties to go to mediation. That's um, in certain circumstances, this, this one qualifies for that. And um, so I'm going to order that you go to mediation um, 
we will get you the um, address of the, the mediator firm. Um, this, uh, there'll be some cost, but it would be less than appointing a guardian ad litem at this point. It will, if you're able to resolve it at mediation, it will be um, quicker than setting this for trial and going through a trial. So um, I've got the order here. The address of the mediation center is at 1338 Commerce in Longview, and it's called the Center for Constructive Resolution and Conversation. I'm going to order that you share the cost, but it's um, my understanding is the total cost is less than two hundred dollars. I'm going to have my uh, judicial assistant, whose name is Autumn, uh, get a hold of both of you and just give you more specifics about um, how to set that up. Okay. Okay. So, uh, that is um, what I'm going to order at this point. I'm going to set a review um, about six weeks from now. Um, I'm hoping that you'll go to mediation and be able to come up with a um, revised parenting plan. If you cannot, you're not successful then we'll come back and we will address the adequate cause motion um, okay. at that time. So uh, today's the 19th, uh, six weeks would be about June 7th. So if you wanna write down, we'll have a hearing on June 7th at nine o'clock and uh, we'll check the status of how the mediation went. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Christopher Olson and Tiffany Johnson. I'm here. Uh, you go by uh, Miss Steinweg now, yes. though, it looks like. Is um, Christopher Olson here? And Miss Lawrence here on this case? Uh, you're muted right now, Miss Lawrence. I was uh, finishing up in 2020, but my name was on the docket, so I showed up in case the court needed me. Okay. Uh, apparently, I this was sent to mediation. Uh, I'm not sure I signed that order or if another judicial officer did, but apparently there was no cooperation from Mr. Olson with the mediation. Is that right? Yeah, he, um, they even called him and gave him extra time and he still didn't appear. I don't know if you received the letter from them. I did not receive the letter from them, but I okay. do understand he did not yeah. uh, cooperate. And he didn't appear at the last court date either. Okay. All right. Well, uh, the attempt was to have both of you uh, determine a parenting plan um, or a modification to the parenting plan through the mediation process. And that mm -hmm. uh, did not work for, for lack of cooperation. Uh, therefore, I'm going to sign the order for adequate cause. And um, you had marked on here that no further hearing was necessary. Um, I'm, I'm going to change that. I'm going to set a hearing on July 5th in front of me, uh, which will be essentially an order to show cause hearing, which will allow you and 
Mr. Olson to present evidence as to what the parenting plan should be or what it should be modified to. And then I'll make a decision at that time uh, as to what um, change needs to be made. Okay. Okay. So he currently has him for the week because we're on the summer schedule. Do I just allow him to keep him until it's okay. Until we make a change. Um, I think we need to continue with what is in effect right now. Okay. Right. So I'm setting a um, further hearing then on July 5th at nine o'clock on Zoom. Okay. And be just like today, and I'll probably take it at the end of the docket so we have plenty of time to discuss what we need to do. Okay. All right. So Thank I will. You. This. Thank you. Ms. Lawrence, um, it sounds like you were involved before. You don't have any updated information at this point, right? No, um, I'm not sure that I'm going to reappoint you or ask you to, to step in. I'm just going to hear from the parties on July 5th. OK, sounds great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Christopher Olson and Tiffany Johnson. I'm here. And is Mr. Olson present? Yes, I'm here, Your Honor. I'm trying to be added in on a different computer because my battery is dying. Are you able to do that? Um, if you had a different computer, you just need to log in on it. I am. It says the host will let you in soon. Oh, okay. I will let you in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is on today. I'm looking at a uh, June 21st order. Where the court found adequate cause to hold a full hearing or trial regarding the petition to modify the parenting plan that was filed on March 30th. So I'm not clear on what the motion to show cause on today is about. Looking at the file, I, I don't see, I see a motion for adequate cause. I see a finding that there was a finding of adequate cause. The matter was sent to mediation and the mediator reported that essentially mediation didn't occur because Mr. Johnson didn't, or Mr. Olson, excuse me, did not attend. So 
So I'm not clear on what, what the matter is being, what's on, what's being addressed today. So um, I started this motion to change the parenting plan due to changes in behavior from Chris. Um, there's been a lot of changes in his parenting and being late picking up. Um, I had approached Chris to see if he could give me a drug, drug test and he said that he would need a week. And this was before I started the change of parenting plan. Um, he's been reapproached three different times. And every time he has said he needed a week, I explained that I would pay for it. I just need to know that he's not using because he used to be very involved in Zach's um, extracurricular activities, school, things like that. And he no longer is. He's late picking up his... Um, girlfriend has a open CPS case for drug use and she is the one that picked Zach up on Sunday and I'm concerned. Uh, Chris is six and a half months late on child support which I'm not trying to increase the child support but he has him for a week on week off during summer and if he's not able to pay that $100 during school, I'm concerned about how he's feeding him and supporting him, basically. All I'm asking for is um, him to have him every other weekend and give a drug test. I, uh, I can pay for it. If he passes it, I'll pay for it. You can, but I need to know that my son is being cared for properly. Okay, so the court granted the motion for the for this to move forward based on the concerns I think you just raised. Well, and he also, we tried to go to mediation. I got a letter from them the first time because he failed to do it in a timely manner. Then when we scheduled, um, the mediator called him, tried to get him on the Zoom, and he didn't answer. And then he has also missed two court appearances in the meantime. Okay. So apparently we're on today to address whether changes will happen or not. To the, let me look at the All right, Mr. Johnson, or I'm sorry, Mr. Olson, I don't mean to keep calling you Mr. Johnson. I'm sorry about that. Um, Mr. Olson, do you have a response? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Um, first of all, um, Kelly Carnell does not have an open CPS case. That is a false accusation right there that her kids' dad is has been, since we have been dating, caused numerous problems in her life. Um, He's done this numerous times, and she does not have an open CPS case. Um, second. Okay. Of okay. So. I understand that position. Go on to any other response you want to make. Yeah. Well, the, um, she says that um, I am haven't been involved in Zach's education or his sporting events. Um, they moved to like Vernonia, which actually i don't even know where they live because and in fact in the parenting plan i'm supposed to pick them up at their house but they have me pick them up at the stop sign down the road so i really don't even know where they live and it's actually been like that um his whole life she tries to keep where they live uh, a secret from me and like and treat me like um like i'm a weirdo or something that i've never done anything uh it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I and, and you know what? I've as far as sports go, since he was uh, started t-ball, I have always been at least an assistant coach or on the field helper in all of his basketball 
and his uh, baseball. And now I can't because I was working and got off at 3.30 and the sporting events, um, they're, we're supposed to get schedules on online with the school's website. And I wasn't able to get like accurate ones for the basketball this year. And um, it's really tough. Um, the drive over there, um, they live in between Vernonia and Jewel. Um, and it's a long ride. It's like a 40 minute ride. And in winter time, that road is crazy. Um, I was, I was late and you know what? I'm sorry. I'm seven minutes late or two minutes late. Then she writes down or texts me about being late on Sunday. Um, the, the pickup spot got changed and I wasn't aware of it until like that day that I was supposed to be in Grand Mound to pick him up at the Grand Mound exit. Um, and yeah, I, I was like 12 minutes late. Um, and then they are taking pictures of us and accusing Kelly. And there is not an open CPS case. Um, Your Honor, this is like, if she, and she did not ask me three times to provide a UA. They did at first and I refused it. And, um, because I feel it's a control thing, but if they want a clean, I can, and I told her this, that I could provide a UA with them and they, she refused it. So that's like her word against my word. And if you want a UA, I will take a UA right now. And, um, oh, and the, I've been unemployed since uh, December and I have been struggling financially. And believe me, um, I hate owing um, child support it is not where I want to be. Um, but like the, un and my unemployment ran out. Um, I'm struggling to make ends meet right now. Um, and we're not, we're not addressing the child support issue today. So, okay. Um, uh, I'm sorry, your honor. I don't know what else to say. Um, um, uh, I, I was like diagnosed with diabetes within the last couple of years and I'm just getting used to being diabetic and getting the proper diet and, you know, not eating the things. And, and, um, uh, the last couple of months I've really been dealing with like swollen feet and, uh, I have a, uh, I backed into a bed frame and it cut my leg open and I'm having a hard time getting that to heal. And I'm seeing, seeing a, wound specialist i know i'm not sure why you need to know that right now i'm sorry um um the the every weekend um it seems to be working out fine every other week during the summer everything seems to be working out fine if she wants me to ua i can provide one for her um i just don't want to um uh, waste any more time um that's about all i got to say oh the i was supposed to get uh another mediator the mediator we had was the same mediator that i had um with my rental with my renter case so she was she had a conflict of interest and i was supposed to get a new mediator and no one let me know um about i didn't even know about the second court date um i'm sorry about that in the the mediator i had didn't know when I asked her about it, she said she wasn't sure, but I was still waiting to be appointed a new mediator, and that never happened. <clears throat> okay, what I'm going to do in this case, I am going to order uh, that you submit to a hair follicle drug test. Um, and Ms. Fellows, are you still here? Yes, Your Honor. Do you um, who, do you do you know off the top of your head who's doing hair follicle tests locally? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, performance occupational um, on Hudson Street. Could you say that again? Performance occupational. Okay.
So I'm going to order you to submit to a hair follicle test at Performance Occupational. That's, I, I don't know the exact address, but that's on Hudson Street in Longview. I need you to do that no later than Friday of this week. And you'll need to provide the result to the court And would you like the address, Your Honor? I'm sorry, go ahead. Where would you like the address? If you have it. It is 1516 Hudson Street, number 201. Mr. Olson, did you get that? One five what? What was that again? 1516 Hudson. Number 201. Okay, I got it. Okay, I got it, thank you. Okay. We're gonna review this on July 21st at 845. If the result of the test is positive, um, or if we, or if you don't take the test, if you don't take the test, I'm going to treat that as a positive result for controlled substances. And so, if you either don't take the test or the test is positive, you'll pay for the test. If the test is negative, that is no, it doesn't show controlled substances. Ms. Steinweg will pay for the test, and then. Based on the information coming out of that test, the court will um, look at what's an appropriate schedule. But I think right now we're going to stick with you every other weekend, um, or the me, every weekend, the current schedule. But and that'll be reviewed again on the twenty first at eight forty five. July 21st, 845 on Zoom. And will the court docket say just self-represented again? No, it's going to be presentation docket for myself, uh, Thad Scudder, presentation for Thad Scudder. Okay. Any questions from either of you? Nope, I think that's it. No, I'm good, thank you. All right, that'll be the order of the court. Thank you. And I believe that concludes this docket. Thanks for the help with that, Ms. Fellows. I appreciate it. Very welcome, Your Honor. I'm, I'm just gonna start with number one on my docket. This is 14300510. This is uh, Tiffany, uh, formerly Johnson, I believe. I see you logged on. Under Steinweig. Steinweig, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Christopher Olson. Now, I believe he has scheduled for an iPad booth. Are you in booth number two, sir? Christopher Olson. No, what is what is your name? I am Brad Evans. Okay. So I'm gonna need can we get someone? He's Christopher Olson's first up and he, I think he's waiting for a Zoom booth. He's standing right here. You want me to step out for him? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind swapping out with him, sir, that'd be really helpful. I appreciate it. Thank you. There you go. She's waiting. Hi, yes, I'm Christopher Olson. Thank you, Mr. Olson, for being present. So as I understand the history here, um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm going to call you Ms. Steinweg, but um, it's somewhat confusing because the court 
you haven't filed a formal name change on your case, so you're still under Tiffany Johnson. But Ms. Steinwig, you um, had put this on. There was a previous finding by a judicial officer of adequate cause. Uh, the judicial officer had sent you all to mis mediation. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you had failed to appear, or excuse me, Mr. Olson, you had failed to appear for that. So this got put on for trial assignment on a new parenting plan. Ms. Steinweg, as I understand it, when you went to trial assignment, um, you were not able to get that date assigned because the judicial officer let you know essentially Mr. Olson was in default status since he hasn't filed a response. Correct. Uh, so you did file this motion for default, which is in accordance with what happened at your trial setting. Since that time, Mr. Olson, you have filed a response to the default. I did receive your declaration affidavit of September 14th indicating your reasons for non-appearance previously in this case. Um, so, so is that supposed to be served to me as well? It Well, it should be. Um, Mr. Olson, have you served that on Ms. Steinwig? Uh, no, I just to the courts. Um, okay. Kind of been a confusing process for me. I understand. In moving forward through these processes without an attorney can be confusing. What I'm going to first require today, I'm not entering default today because Mr. Olson has appeared. The law favors judgment on the merits. When someone has appeared despite prior non-appearance, the court generally will not enter default. However, Mr. Olson, essentially that means kind of this is your, this is your kind of last attempt to not go into default. So I'm going to set you all a new review date with this court. And by that date, I need you to file a response uh, to Ms. Steinwig's request. But I also want to ask the two of you, do you want to be referred back to mediation? Your Honor, I am at the point where he has been requested to do mediation, a hair follicle test. He has not done anything that has been requested of him. Okay. And now, the weekend before last, my son was in an accident where he was at his house and suffered a serious concussion, and he's not following the doctor's guidelines, I'm just, it's. <laughs> okay, so let's do this then. Has he been served your proposed parenting plan? Yes, back in March, I believe. I see that March 30th, okay. Mr. Olson, do you have the proposed parenting plan from Ms. Steinwig from back in March? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna set a review date. Um, if you all are available next week, I'm just gonna give you one week because this has been going on since March. I'm gonna give you one week to file a response to the proposed parenting plan. Otherwise, I will again entertain Ms. Steinwig's motion for default. So you have one, are you both available um, October 4th at 9 a.m.? I am. Yes. Okay. So. I'm going to give you until October 4th, well, really October 3rd, to file a response to on Ms. Steinweg and this court as to your position on the proposed parenting plan. I want to be really clear, if you don't hit that deadline, I will entertain another motion for default, and it would likely be granted at that time. If, however, you do respond, then when we come together next week, I'll get you both set on the trial assignment calendar. Okay. Ms. Steinwig, do you have any questions for me? Uh, what will the docket say? Just self-represented again? Yeah, it'll be just the same as this morning. It'll say self-rep family lot A. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. It's going to fill out this order quickly.
I'm going to just make a note for the clerk's minutes that this is denied without prejudice so that um, Ms. Steinwig may refile if a force her to do it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for having those ready for the court. Have a great day. Thanks. Okay. And then I think in our other Zoom booth, we have number one on our docket. Christopher Olson, uh, this is 14-3-005-100. Do I have Tiffany uh, Steinwig, formerly Johnson? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And Mr. Olson, can you hear the court? And Okay. Let me just get into your digital file. So when we were here last, I denied Ms. Steinwig's motion for default um, because Mr. Olson, you did appear, but I gave you a deadline of today to file your parenting plan response. Um, I haven't seen anything come through. Um, I, where I'm are sorry. We? Go ahead. I did turn in some paperwork today, um, Your Honor. I've had the hardest time, uh, it seems, uh, an attorney would have been great for me. Um, I mean, even yesterday, I came in yesterday to turn in my paperwork early. Um, I had to attach some attachments and when I went to go get them printed, the Wi-Fi wouldn't work and I couldn't get them printed. And it's like um, one thing after another has, with the case did you and, so just to check in um did you file your response to the parenting plan today yes this morning i was here first thing this morning okay sometimes and i that you would not have any reason to know this but um sometimes people will um, provide a, what's called a bench copy. So, cause it's going to take about four days for me to wait for it to be digitally scanned in. So I don't have any way to see what you have filed. So what people will do is provide the clerk with a hard copy saying, give this to the judge. That way I have it in front of me for today's hearing. Yeah. I assume you didn't do that. No. Um, <laughs> you know, I apologize. And it just seems like that, um, I should have had a copy for Tiffany to, you know, she. Well, should. well, so that's my next question is you do have to serve Ms. Steinweg with whatever you're filing with the court. Okay. I and will, I, I will give you some additional time to get that done, but I know I don't want to keep up taking up Ms. Steinweg's time for your no. failure to get these things done on time. I am so sorry. That okay. This do when when can you get her copies of the documents you have filed with the court? Um, today, I mean, absolutely, I can today. Now they live quite a ways away. Um, I could email them to her. I guess I could do that. Yeah, or text them to her. Well, it, let me let me ask Miss Steinway because we presume personal service, but. Ms. Steinway, would you be willing to accept email copies of these documents for purposes of moving this case forward? Your Honor, at this point, last week, he was given a date and told that if he didn't follow through, that we would consider default. Correct. And as, at this point... That's not my question. He has filed his answer with the court. My order says he has to file it by October 4th. He did that. I'm not saying that he's done a great job, but I'm saying he met the bare minimum for avoiding a default. And he I will accept it. them however I can get them. Okay. What is it? Does he have your current email? I don't. It's the paperwork, but. I can just text it to you if you. I don't I'll know. I'll send you my email address. Okay. That would be great. I So, Mr. Olson, I'm going to. If Ms. Steinwick's available next week, I'm going to set this over one week. I'll that'll give me time to review your response. 
you'll have made service on her, but then we really are moving forward. Cause I absolutely understand Ms. Steinwick's frustration with what is happening here. It just, we can't. I understand. We've done, we've done the bare, bare minimum to avoid default, but that's not saying too much. Okay. So, I mean, really we could probably resolve it right now. Like I could tell her, you know, what I have done, you know, and, and what I'm doing now. And I know that she was really concerned because the, uh, the judge wanted me to take a hair follicle. And I have been in going into debt. Like um, I lost my job in, in December and unemployment ran out and I had to have emergency surgery on my leg and I can't work. And like I'm struggling so bad financially um, that another three hundred and fifty dollars for a hair follicle. And your honor. I, I will admit to that after 14 years, I relapsed. Um, after I lost my job, I got into a, a funk and I relapsed. And um, when they admitted me for my emergency surgery in Portland on my Achilles, um, that was that was it. Um, that was July 22nd. That's the last time I used. I got myself into outpatient treatment. I'm still oh, in. So, so back on August 1st, you were ordered to submit to a hair follicle test, or excuse me, back in July, you were ordered to submit to hair follicle testing. And then by August 1st, a judge issued a ruling that you had failed to appear at the July 21st hearing, that you had not provided results of the drug test. So the court presumptively found that those results would have been positive. Have you done a hair follicle test since August 1st? No, I have inquired on one. Um, like I said, it's $350 and really I didn't know they need an address to send it to. Um, and I, I don't, I don't know where I would put down for them to send the results to. I will go get one today. Um, it's not as easy as it sounds. Um, but like I said, it's, I'm going to end up paying for it and I really don't can't afford another $350, but I would absolutely go do that if that's what you're. So, well, I mean, I, it's not what I ruled. It's what a, a, another judicial officer in this county has already ruled. I'm not going to overturn that. That's still an outstanding obligation of yours. Okay. But let me just ask you this for purposes of moving this along. So we know what we're doing next week. Are you objecting to um, the proposed, the Ms. Steinwick's petition to modify the parenting plan. Yes. Um, okay. I, well, she wants me to only get him every other weekend. Um, I'm not going to do that. That's not enough. Okay. Okay. Well, your, I will review that objection when it isn't, I'm assuming that's what you have filed with the court is your statement regarding your objection to her request. Is that correct? Yeah, I wish. I will, I will review that. We will hold a hearing on that issue next Wednesday um, at 9 a.m. I would tell you, that again, I'm gonna reiterate that your obligation to get hair follicle testing is still an outstanding obligation. Failure to do so leaves the court with no option but to consider that your failure to do it means the test would have likely been positive. So. Well, it. I mean, I'm admitting that I relapse. I mean, why? I mean, you just want it on paper and then for me to go $350 more into debt that I don't have doesn't make sense to me, but that's okay. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Ms. Steinweg, are you available next Wednesday? And, and again, I understand your objection to another set over and I understand your frustration with this process, but we will move forward next Wednesday. I am. Okay. I, I apologize. We will see you both back 9 a.m. Uh, next Wednesday, which is, what's the date? The 11th. the 11th, thank you, to get my calendar out here. Okay, we'll see you back next week. Thank you both. Thank you. Then we have uh, Mr. Olson, I believe that's you in iPad booth two. Yes. 
Okay. And then Tiffany uh, Steinwig, I almost said Johnson, and then I saw the, the name on the Zoom screen. Okay. So we have been here a few times on a motion in order for default. I know Ms. Steinwig has been uh, taking great efforts to get a change to the parenting plan done. Adequate cause was personally, was, excuse me, was granted previously. The next step was for Ms. Steinwig to um, have a hearing on her proposed parenting plan, given that a judicial officer did find adequate cause um, to modify or at least re-review the parenting plan. What happened from there appears to be that uh, mediation was scheduled instead of a hearing. Um, Mr. Olson did not show up for that mediation. A judge, no. hold on a second, I'm not done yet. Uh, um, a um, motion to show cause was set, but then converted to a uh, trial assignment. When Ms. Steinwig went to get a trial date, the judge told her that it appeared Mr. Olson was in default status, and so they couldn't continue with the trial. And I'm just reciting this so that Ms. Steinwig knows I am very aware of all the steps she's taken to try and get where she needs to go. Um, Mr. Olson, you recently, once uh, the motion for default was brought, did appear. The court gave you a deadline initially to respond. You failed to respond by that date, but indicated some reasons for why and that you were going to get that done. I do see, so our last hearing was October 4th. I had set that date as the deadline for you to file a response to the modification to the parenting plan. When we were here, it was not in front of me because you had just filed it. It has been filed with the date of October 4th. So I know that you have filed a response on the deadline I set for you. My question is, did you serve that declaration on Ms. Steinwig? Has she had a chance to see what you sent the court? Yes. Okay. Your Ms. Honor. Steinwig, yeah, go ahead, Ms. Steinwig. Um, so he was supposed to email me it. And that never happened. So Sunday, I asked if I could pick up a copy. I did get a copy of two pieces of paper that were typed. However, when I, he texted me a picture of two different pieces of paper. So he said that he's confused and unsure what he actually turned in. So I don't know if what's in front of me is what he turned in or not. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So the document that you have, I'll just kind of read to you the first sentence. I have what he filed and tell me if it's the same thing you have. So the document I have is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five paragraphs long. And it starts with, to begin with, I would like to thank the court for this opportunity to write this declaration. Yeah, that's correct. And, okay. And then the very last sentence is once again, I would like to let the court know my appreciation in this opportunity to submit this document. Yes. Okay. That's what I have in front of me. Okay. Okay. So Mr. Olson, go ahead. And then we're kind of going to work through what our next steps are here. Go ahead, sir. Um, about the mediator, uh, when we were supposed to get with the mediator, mm -hmm. the mediator was working with me on my rental, my um, rent. Um, since I had lost my job, we had a, a contract going with my um, my renters and that mediator had to back out and um, they were supposed to give us another mediator. And I don't know if Tiffany even knew this. Um, so uh, I did miss that one court date thinking that we had to see the mediator before we went to court. Um, and that wasn't the case. And so I wish I would have seen the mediator, not just for the help for both of us, but obviously for me, because I really have just like not knowing what I've been doing through this whole case. And I am sorry for wasting everybody's time. Every time I come to court, it seems like I've done something wrong again. Like I went from low self-esteem to no self-esteem. So I'm, I'm just as frustrated as... Zach's mom in this matter. Um, I just would like to move on. Have you um, done Have you done the other things the court ordered, like the hair follicle test or UAs? Oh, 
Okay. Um, I have and I know, and hold on, hold on, sir. A second. Cause I know, let me just say this, this comes from a place of, I don't want to hear excuses. I just want you to tell me, cause you've, you've told me your excuses before and why you don't think that you need to do it. So I really just need you to answer the question right now, which is, have you done the drug testing that the court previously ordered? No. And okay. would you why? I've heard your reasons before last time. I assume it's the same last time you told me it doesn't matter because you're admitting that you were using and that you had relapsed. So yes, it would have been positive. Is that essentially? Well, no, I, I tried to tried to get one, but you have to have it's $350. And um, I've talked to the secretaries here on information. They, they need a GAL or a attorney to uh, an address to send it to. Um, I even went to the legal um, advice place to talk to them about how I could get the hair follicle paid for and um, up front, but they need the money up front. They, I can't just go get a hair follicle taken. So you don't have the money to pay for the hair follicle testing? No, your, your honor, I am so um, financially hurting right now that uh, I, I'm struggling to keep my apartment right now. Okay. Ms. Steinwick, um, do you want to say anything to that? It's just interesting to me that he has boats and all these things outside of his home, uh, kayaks and things like that. And honestly, if you wanted to put your child first, you would get rid of those things to do this. I mean, I just don't feel like it's his priority right now. Well, and at this point, you know, the court order is essentially, you know, visitation is contingent on you getting those things done. So I, I do think that should be very high priority for you, sir. Ms. Ms. Steinwig, what I'm going to ask you, um, did you have to pay for the mediation that he didn't show up for? I paid the first time I paid and then um, they sent me a letter saying that he didn't do it in time. The second time I paid and he was able to, uh, they called him on that day to try to get a hold of him to see why he didn't want to do it. He didn't answer the phone. They gave him 20 additional minutes. I did pay again. However, they reimbursed me my money. They did reimburse you yeah. for, was that for the June mediation that he didn't show up for? They reimbursed you for that? There was that one. And then there was one before that, that we were supposed to do. And he didn't follow through with that either. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. He is here now. He's responding um, I think the prior judicial officer, why he sent you to mediation is he said it, it would be cheaper than getting a GAL involved, which is true. Um, so I guess the question for you, Ms. Steinwig, that I would have is to proceed forward with getting your parenting plan changed. We can do a couple things and I'm going to leave it in your court to tell me how you want to proceed because it's your motion. Um, we could certainly get you back on a trial assignment docket to actually have a you know one one to two hour hearing on the parenting plan that you're proposing. Um, now that he has responded, he wouldn't be considered in default, so we could get that set for you. You probably would want a GAL to testify in that type of situation, or we could do a final mediation set. And um, I think at this point, I'd put the cost of that on Mr. Olson. Um, so. Do you want to give mediation one more shot before we move forward with trial or what is your request today? I just don't feel that we are going to come to an agreement at mediation. Okay. Um, and if he already hasn't followed through two times, I just don't understand why we're giving him so many opportunities. I mean, well, we're giving him opportunities because he's not considered in default by appearing after you filed your motion for default. He did appear he has now filed a response. The law favors a resolution on the merits, not a default. So that's why. Um, those are all of the reasons that if I were to enter a default and just give you what you want today, it would get reversed at, on an appeal. 
So that's why we're doing the things now so that this doesn't drag on for six more months. So okay. if you're saying you don't want to do mediation, I am fine. I understand your reasoning. I understand you all have tried this twice before. I understand that it is unlikely, especially with Mr. Olson, not adhering to court orders. I can understand your position for thinking it wouldn't get you anywhere. Um, so we could get you set for a contested hearing on the underlying parenting plan. I do believe you would want me to appoint a GAL that meets with the two of you and makes a recommendation to the court one way or the other about what the parenting plan should look like. Um, if I do that, I'm going to inquire about each of your finances to determine if it's going to be a county pay or private pay. Is he able to pay for a mediator? <laughs> I mean, I can pay my own portion. That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is trying to come to an agreement. Right. And I understand, I hear and, you loud and clear. Yeah. And I don't understand why he's even fighting this considering I'm already getting him at least one additional weekend a month to get him to his activities and things like that. I just don't understand why. And I can't answer that for you. I, all I can say is I understand your frustrations and what I can do is offer, ask you which venue you would like this to move forward with. We can move you on to a contested hearing um, I do. Let's do the mediator and try to do that one more time. Um, and then I guess we'll just move on from there. Okay. So Mr. is there a specific mediator that we cannot use? They shouldn't, there shouldn't be a conflict of interest as they're just trying to resolve issues. Correct. Yeah. Well, and this is, um, this is, that's news to me. I don't see anywhere in the documents that a mediator has said they had to recuse because of a conflict. The, the June mediator just simply said, Mr. Olson did not show up. So, um, that that's at the community mediation center in long. And there's that's multiple when you go on yep. the video that's, chat. That's, I would be sending you back to mediation at that same place. Mr. Olson, let me ask you, are you open to mediation? Will you meaningfully participate in yes. mediation? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna do two things. Um, I will send you all back to mediation. I'm going to... I know where they are. Oh, there we go. I know where they are in Portland 1. <laughs> All right. Mr. Olson, are you willing to pay, are you able to pay half of the mediation cost? Well, the last time she, she, I got a discounted fee for being unemployed. So, and I was able to pay that and I did pay that. And I also got refunded that too. Okay. But yes. Yes. I oh, am. I'll, okay. So I'll go ahead and put the 50, 50 and then, uh, sir, if you need to work with them on a request for a reduced, uh, reduced rate, please do so. Um, let me make sure I have all, has your ad, either of your addresses or phone numbers changed since the last time you went through mediation? Mine is no. not. Okay. So Mr. Olson still, uh, Voice Drive in Kelso mm -hmm. and uh, Ms. Steinwig, Nahalem Highway. Yes. Okay. His uh, phone number has changed or he gonna... sent me a different phone number, so. Yeah, I was about to say, Mr. Olson, I don't even have a phone number for you right now. What is your phone number? Um, well, I still am using the two number. I just can't call out on that number. Can you uh, receive, do you receive calls yeah. on that number? Okay, go ahead and give me that full phone number. Well, if you bear with me for one second, I don't know my new phone number yet. So bear with me while I okay. look it up for you. That's fine. And then Ms. Steinwig, while he's doing that, what I'm also going to do is set um, 
a sh what's called a show cause hearing on your parenting plan request just back in front of me on a docket so that if mediation is not successful, um, we will move forward on that date without you having to go to a separate trial assignment docket. So if we do not come to an agreement at the show cause hearing, will anything happen or we'll schedule a new trial date? Um, what'll happen is if you, you all go to mediation, if that is not successful, then it's gonna come back to me. Um, we'll have a show cause hearing on your request to change the parenting plan in front of me on this docket. So okay. you, you're not gonna be asked to, you do not. I think last time that's how it was gonna go, but then you, and again, no, through no fault of your own, it's difficult when you're not represented. You did file a trial assignment request. I'm not gonna have you do that this time. I'm gonna keep the show cause hearing for your underlying request to change the parenting plan on this docket. So we'll set a date for that today. Okay. Um, once again, I'm, uh, Tiffany has the phone number on her phone for this, this new phone number. I'm not sure how to get in there and find out the phone number of this phone. Are you ready? I am, yes. Thank you. Okay. I've got that on the order. Um, on the last page, it asks if uh, you are in agreement with the order I am signing, transferring this case back to mediation. Mr. Olson, for you, are you in agreement? Um, yeah, well, I missed what you guys were talking about. Um, I Okay, I'll come back to it. Just hold on. I'm asking, are you in agreement that I signed this order sending your case back to mediation? Yes. Okay, and then Ms. Steinweg, are you in agreement? Yes. So I'm gonna indicate your agreement via Zoom. Mr. Olson, you had a question for me, go ahead. Yeah, on getting a hold of the mediator and how am I, what will they be getting a hold of me? Am I supposed to get a hold of them? Do you have a phone number I need to get? Because um, I know it doesn't look like I've participated and whatnot, but believe me, I'm, I don't know. Uh, what, what do we need to do to get a hold of the mediator? What do okay. I need? So I can send all that information um, to him. Yeah. So I guess, Mr. Olson, I'm a little confused because you told me you've been in touch with them before and you've used them before. So. Um, yeah, well, you guys don't have any recollection of them saying that I needed to get a different mediator that she had to, she that there was a conflict of interest. And now I'm, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Like why, how come nobody knew about so let this. me let me just ask you a question mr olson yes does that have any bearing that issue that you're raising right now that you seem so upset about does that have any bearing on whether this court should change your parenting plan well no but it's okay so we're going to move on so okay. what i'm telling you is you are being referred back to the community mediation center the phone number They will receive a copy of this order. The order has both of your phone numbers on it. They will reach out to you. You are free to reach out to them if you would like. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is set a show cause hearing date. If mediation is not successful, this is the date by which both of you will be asked to present your evidence as to why a parenting plan should be changed or should not be changed. Let's see, I don't know how, do you all recall about how far out they were booking the last time you did this? It was about two weeks, I think. Yeah, that's, they were pretty quick say, actually. I was gonna say two or three weeks. So. Let's set you out just 30 days to November 8. If you're both available, November 8 at 9 a.m. Yep. That'll be our show cause date for the change to the parenting plan. Essentially, Mr. Olson, a contested hearing where you would be bringing forth testimony and evidence as to why you don't think the parenting plan should change 
or if it should change what changes you're proposing. Um, if mediation is successful, we will strike the November 8th date, or at least we'll strike the November 8th show cause. We'll keep the date to review the mediation results though. Okay. Okay. Any questions for me? No. Mr. Olson, any questions for me? Um, yeah, on the hair follicle, where, where do we stand on that now? Um, I'm what do you mean, where do we stand on that? You and I have talked about it every time you've been here. And I've told you there's a standing order from a different judicial officer that I am not changing. So it remains an obligation of yours to complete. I, and I would say this, the, the allegations of drug use were a significant part of the reason that the judicial officer found there was adequate cause to review the parenting plan. So yes, that still is a standing order. Okay, because I was down there yesterday, yeah, you know, trying to final get one, and I can't. I don't have three hundred and fifty dollars. I also need an address for them to send it to. Um, if I have a miracle, you know, and someone or I get help paying for it, I need to give them an address to send it to. They they routinely file those with the court. Okay. Oh, what place are you talking about? Um, and who, who are they? Because the place that I went to, they don't know. I'm not sure what you're asking me, sir. But when you, when the court sends somebody to get a hair follicle, where do they send them? Because the secretaries out here on the second floor, they don't know. I believe the judge told you where to yeah, go. I was going to say, I'm just looking at the notes from the hearing. I'm just going to go back there. I think the judge specifically addressed it. Yes. You, yeah. you asked, you asked this question, sir, on July okay. 5th of 2023. Okay. So you okay. were in front of the court and I'll give you the exact time. You were in front of the court at 10 25 AM on July 5th, 2023 in front of an elected superior court judge in this county, Judge Scudder, and you asked at 10.31 a.m. where you needed to go. And at 10.38 a.m., the court responded, Mr. Olson, to obtain hair follicle test at Performance Occupational in Longview no later than Friday of this week and provide result to court. Okay, their address okay. changed. Perfect. That's that's the place I went to. Um, okay. Any 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 other questions for me? No, Your Honor. Okay. Miss Steinwig, any other questions? No, thank you. Okay, thank you both. You're free to log out. And then, have I missed any cases on our docket? Okay, we'll go ahead and log out and end docket. One zero zero. Uh, Christopher Olson and Tiffany Steinweg. Do we have Mr. Olson with us today? I don't see that he's here. I don't see that he's here. Um, Ms. Steinweg, what I noticed from our last hearing was that um, we sent you all back to mediation. Has that mediation occurred? Um, no. <laughs> Okay. So I, I paid the day after, which was October 12th. Okay. Um, she, Leah works at the mediation office. She had reached out to him on the 17th. I emailed her asking if we could schedule. She said he hadn't paid. Um, the 19th, he texted me saying he was taking his hair follicle test, which I haven't seen any results for that, but, uh, the 20th, she asked me if he pays, what will work. I, he finally paid on the 30th, I think. Okay. But as we went over in court last time, it takes two weeks for them to schedule. So the soonest she could get us in was the 14th, but I haven't heard anything else. Um, uh, the 14th of this month? Yeah. Okay. Well, so did you all um, 
did you all actually schedule for the 14th? I I scheduled just because I yeah. I'm <laughs> okay. Honestly, feel like I'm beating my head against a brick wall. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, here's what I'm inclined to do. If you have the mediation, and I know Mr. Olson's not here, I will make note of that in our minutes. Um, let's let's just set you out one week to the 15th. So you'll be back and Mr. Olson will need to appear. Um, and if he doesn't, we'll move forward without him because he's had notice of the show cause that has been filed. And when and I'll I'll note for the record, when he was here at our last hearing, I was very clear that if mediation was unsuccessful, we'd be moving forward on the show cause motion uh, today. And he is not here. The only reason I am not going to move forward today is because I want to see if mediation occurs on the 14th, if he shows up, and if mediation is successful, win-win for everyone. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't show up on the 14th, or if mediation is unsuccessful, then the following day, Wednesday, November 15th, we will move forward on your show cause motion. Okay. Does that work okay for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's, I, it's just upsetting because, I mean, this is the, the well... Third yeah. time that we've tried to do this. So. Understood a hundred percent. So November 15th at nine. November 15th at nine, go ahead and log back on. Um, and if for some reason mediation is successful, great. Um, but I am guessing I will see you on the 15th and we'll move forward on your show cause. I'm sure that you will. Okay. We'll see <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yep.